Okay, two more examples. Um, this one says that people with type O negative blood are universal donors. Any patient can receive O negative blood. Only 7.2% of people have O negative blood. If 10 people appear at random to give blood, what is the probability that at least one of them is a universal donor? Now, anytime you have questions where it's asking at least one, those probabilities can get pretty difficult to figure out because you could, you, you one way to do it would be, would be to figure out the probability of one of them being a universal donor, then the probability of two of them being universal, then the probability of three of them and four of them and five and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then what do you do with all those probabilities? So the complement rule is sometimes a better rule to use. So if we're trying to find the probability that at least one is a universal donor, which is O negative, the complement rule would say we could do one minus the probability of the opposite, which would be that none of them are universal donors. And if, if none of them have O negative blood, then that would mean that all 10 of them do not have O negative. Okay, so let me just state that one more time. It's like we're going to do the opposite, one minus the opposite. So the opposite of at least one would be zero or none. So none of the 10 people have O negative blood would go here. Or you could think of it as all 10 of them do not have O negative. Okay, so if they say 7.2% of people have O negative blood, then what percent of people do not have O negative blood? 92.8% of people do not have O negative blood. Okay, so if we want to find 10 people who do not have O negative blood, we could do 0.928, that would be the first person, times 0.928, that would be the second person, times 0.928, that would be the third person with, um, without having O negative blood, the fourth person, the fifth person, okay, etc. right? Well, there's 10 people. So the faster way to figure out the probability of 10 people not having O negative blood would be to do 0.928 to the 10th. Because you saw that I was multiplying them out. I'd be multiplying 0.928 out 10 times. Okay, so this is the quicker way. So then I'm going to have 1 minus 0.4736, which ends up equaling 0.5263. So that would then mean that 52.63% um, would be the probability that at least one of those 10 people have O negative blood. Okay, last example. Um, Suppose the probability that I have a pop quiz today in math is 34%. The probability that I get called on to present a project today in social studies is 28%. And the probability that both happen is 8%. What is the probability that I have a pop quiz today given that I do get called on to present in social studies? Well, I see that word given, which means that this is a conditional probability. So, um, I'm looking for the probability that I have a pop quiz given 
that I got called on to present in social studies. Okay, and again, back from yesterday with conditional probabilities, we have a formula and goes on the top. So the probability of having a pop quiz and presenting in social studies divided by the probability of the given statement, the probability of having to present in social studies. And I was told these two. Here's the probability that both happen. That's 8% or 0.08. And I was told the probability of having to present in social studies was 28%, so 0.28. And all I have to do is just divide those two. And I get 0.2857 and that's my answer. Okay, last one. So this one says, what's the probability that I get called on to present in social studies today given that I have a pop quiz? So that's kind of seems like the opposite, right? So let's write it out in words. The probability that I get called on to present given that I have a pop quiz. Okay, so the and probability goes on the top. So the probability that I get called on to present and have a pop quiz divided by the probability of the given statement. So now this time it's the probability of a pop quiz. Okay, so the and, again, both happening is 8%, 0 0.08. The probability of having a pop quiz is 34%, so 0.34. Divide those two, and we get 0.2353. This was just a review of conditional probability, um, and just reminding you that whatever um, whatever the given statement is, that's the probability that goes on the bottom. And is what goes on top. Okay, that's it. So now you can start working on homework number six. Okay. All right. Bye.